Well, good morning, guys, and uh, welcome to our very first Good Friday online service here at Hope Church Commandment slash the Dyer Office. Um, obviously, things are not quite uh, the same as usual because of everything going on, but hey, it is really awesome that you can join us with the magic of the internet uh, so that we can sit together and pray together and be together to celebrate this Good Friday. And what are we celebrating? Well, we're celebrating Jesus' victory over sin and death. We're not celebrating this morning those dark things that happened on that day. We're not celebrating the death of a man. We're not celebrating uh, the torture uh, and the suffering that went on. But we are celebrating this morning the fact that he sacrificed himself so that we could have a real relationship and a personal relationship with the God of the universe. You see, God is not far off this morning. I know a lot of us are stuck in our houses. A lot of us are maybe uh, isolated. Maybe some of you are living on your own and you're isolated and you don't really get out and you can't talk to anybody. But listen, God is not far off this morning. God, because of what Jesus did on the cross, is right there with each and every one of us this morning. Isn't that amazing? Even though we can't meet together, we can still meet with God this morning. So today is Good Friday. And what I want to do this morning, I want to spend a little bit of time. Um, we're going to focus on, on the Good Friday scene. We're going to focus on the cross. But what I want to do is I want to pan out a little bit. I want to just, just, just take a tiny little zoom out of the scene. And I want to look at three groups of people that we see around the cross this morning as Jesus is there he's lifted high he's dying he's praying for us and he's he's, he's there and he's suffering for my sin and for you and he's paying the price for us I want to just take a quick look at some people that were around the cross now if I can get this to work which I'm not promising that I can uh, but it is something I have to do once I finished filming this video. So I may or may not get this to work. If I can get it to work, then the uh, the words and the, the words I'm going to be reading should pop up somewhere around this part of the video, just above my head. If I can get it to work. If I can't get it to work, hey guys, what you need to do is grab your Bibles, okay? Uh, grab your pause button or whatever. Uh, I'll let you know where the Bible passages are because we're looking at three different passages this morning. Uh, I will let you know where the passages are. Uh, pause the video, flick there quick and read along with me. All right. So here we go. Our first group of people, our first passage is found in John chapter 19. OK, so we're going to turn to John chapter 19 and we're going uh, starting from verse 25. And going only as far as verse 27. John 19, 25 reads like this. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Here we see our first group of people. We find Jesus' mother his auntie, some other ladies, and someone that the Bible describes as the disciple that he loved. Now we know that this is John, okay? Um, we know that because in other passages, uh, he's described like that. And it's not that Jesus um, didn't like or love his other disciples. It's just that he had this really special bond with John. And as far as we know, as far as I'm aware, John is the only one that is around the cross at this time. All his other disciples have run away and scattered. So you we see from the cross this group of people who love Jesus. 
See, Jesus is there and he's dying on the cross. He's suffering for our sins. And here you have this small group of people who love Jesus. <clears throat> We're standing there watching this whole thing unfold. And they're there and their hearts are breaking. They're watching this whole thing happen. And there's nothing that they can do about it. And then we're going to jump to our second group of people. And our second group of people are found in Luke. And we're going to Luke. Uh, let me look at my notes. Luke chapter 23, verse 35 to 37. Luke 23, 35 to 37. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was written notice above him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. Here we have another group of people who have gathered around the cross. And this group of people is not like our first group of people. Our first group of people were those who loved Jesus. And now we have a group of people who hate him. These are the people, these are the rulers and the religious leaders that wanted to put him to death. These are the people that wanted Jesus out of the way. They were listening to his teachings, they were listening to things he was saying, and it was interfering with their comfortable way of life. And they wanted him out of the way. They hated him with a passion. And you've also got the soldiers, who maybe don't hate Jesus, they're just doing their job, but they're mocking him, they're making fun of him. They're just having a great time not liking Jesus right now. You've got people who love him. You've got the people who hate him. And then our last, uh, I say group of people, it's one man. And for this passage, we're going to Mark. To Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15 and one verse in Mark 15 and that's verse 21. It says this, a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father, uh, the father, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. Here you have a guy who's coming in from the country. Now, my guess, I, I googled him, there's not a lot that we know about this guy and I don't want to go into any major speculation here but this guy's coming in from the country so my guess is he's either coming in uh, for the Passover or he's just kind of coming in from work this guy's been somewhere he's coming back and he's just passing by he had no intention of going and watching this crucifixion he's just passing by he's kind of indifferent to what's going on but here he is, passing by, and now he has to get involved, because they're making him carry Jesus' cross. This is before the crucifixion itself starts happening, it's as he's going up. Now, the thing about um, the crucifixion is that it wasn't kind of like in a public square. It was outside of the city. It was along the main road, and they would have a number of crosses set up. And where Jesus was crucified was up on a hill. And the idea was that as you went in and out of the city, you would see the people who were up on the cross and you'd look at them and it would be a visual reminder to you that you did not want to cross the Romans. It would be a visual uh, reminder to you that you did not want to get on the bad side of these people because you did not want to end up on the cross like one of these 
people, like these criminals, being put to public shame and ridicule. So here's Simon. He's coming back from his business trip or wherever he's been. And he's just passing by. You've got the people that love Jesus. You've got the people that hate Jesus. And you've got the passers by. So I have a question for you this morning. As we zoom out slightly from this crucifixion scene. As today we sit and maybe we focus on Good Friday. Maybe you're sitting there and you love Jesus. Where are you in this crowd? Do you love Jesus this morning? And if you do, that's awesome. I'm really happy for you. I'm glad that you love Jesus this morning. But you know, loving Jesus doesn't take away from maybe our feelings of insecurity, our feelings of, of hopelessness, our our feelings of, of longing to get out of the house and, and frustration. You know, it, it is hard. And just because we love Jesus doesn't mean we're not going to face hard times. You know, th there are people that I know who love Jesus who have coronavirus. We're not exempt from these things. There are people that I know who don't have coronavirus and that love Jesus, but they have some sort of other sickness or disease. We're not promised an easy time. What we are promised is eternal life. We are promised victory over sin and death. So as we sit here this morning, as we focus on Jesus, as we, we recognise Good Friday for what it really is, this victorious day full of hope and a, a future. Let's love Jesus. Let's push in to Jesus this morning. Let's really grab hold of the truth that he wants to reveal to us this morning. Maybe that's not you. Maybe you this morning, you hate Jesus. And if you hate Jesus, I'll be totally honest with you. I'm a little confused as to why you're watching this video. But maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you tell everyone you love Jesus, but secretly you hate him. Maybe you're living a secret life this morning and you're sitting at home and you're watching this video because you have to. Maybe because you feel like you have to. Or maybe because someone else is watching this video and you wish they would just turn it off. Because you don't want to hear any more about this Jesus bloke. Well hey, if you hate Jesus this morning, I've got news for you. You might hate him, but he loves you. He loves you even though you hate him. When those men were standing around the cross and they were hurling insults at him when they were making fun of him they were just being really horrible to him when they were torturing him there's this whole passage uh, in the bible about just literally the soldiers torturing and punishing Jesus for doing nothing wrong you know if you hate him this morning even in that scenario Jesus loves you and Jesus wants a relationship with you Jesus wants you to know that love that he has for you so please as you sit in quiet this morning as maybe you can hear this video in the background as you are willing me to stop talking to you let me say to you this morning one more time God loves you God wants a relationship with you and he wants it so bad that his son died for you do you love him this morning do you hate him this morning? Or maybe you're just passing by. Maybe you're indifferent to Jesus. Maybe you don't know a lot about Jesus this morning. Maybe Jesus is completely new to you this morning. And maybe, like the second group of people, you were listening to this video because someone else has got it on in the background. Or maybe you, you click in through YouTube and one of us has, has shared it on Facebook or something. And you just kind of come across this video and you've been like, oh, I know that guy. That's G. I know him from such and such a place. I wonder what he's talking about. And maybe you're watching this video and thanks for watching. But maybe you have no interest in Jesus this morning. Maybe just passing by. As you pass by, can I just encourage you this morning 
to stop. Can I encourage you this morning to think and to, to just to focus on Jesus this morning. And just like Simon was made to do, can I encourage you this morning to pick up Jesus' cross? What does that mean? That means just love him. Can I encourage you this morning to get on your knees and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Ask God to show you what it is to have a real personal relationship with him this morning. Because just like the people who love him, just like the people who hate him, if you're passing by this morning, I've got news for you. Jesus loves you. God loves you. So where are you this morning? Do you love him? Do you hate him? Are you indifferent to him? Because the story doesn't end there. There is a phrase that we bat around church all the time, especially on Good Friday. You're going to see it all over the internet this morning and throughout the day and probably all weekend. Today, is, is classed as the darkest day in history. Good Friday was the darkest day there ever will be because it is the day that the Son of God died. But to follow on that sentence, a lot of Christians will bat around this phrase and we will say that Sunday is coming. What does that mean? It means that Easter Sunday is coming because yes, Jesus died on Good Friday but on Sunday morning, he rose from the dead. He is alive. He wasn't alive for a little bit and then died again. No, he is alive even today. 2,000 plus years later, Jesus is alive. And we say the sentence all the time, Sunday is coming. And it reminds us that even though Good Friday was dark, Sunday came with the dawn. It was bright. It was victorious. It was amazing. But wait, there's more. Because in our history, where we are right here right now, Sunday's come and Sunday's gone. Resurrection Sunday has happened. It's in our past. So when we say Sunday's coming, we talk about it in a, in, in a sort of metaphorical sense. But can I encourage you with this? Even though Resurrection Sunday has come and gone, there is another day coming. The Son's day is coming. This is the day that Jesus comes back to earth. This is the day that he comes back to collect all those people who love him and to take them to heaven to be with him for all of eternity so if you're in that first group this morning if you're in the group that love jesus with all your heart you know one day oh no hang on sorry is it still filming yes sorry i have a notification on my phone tell me my battery's almost dead so we're going to be quick one day, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back to collect those who love him. And we're going to go back and we're going to be in heaven with Jesus for all of eternity. And it's going to be amazing. But for those who, who hate him, for those who are just passers by, at that point on the sun's day, it's too late. You can't change your mind at that point so please let me encourage you if if you were in one of those two groups if if you were somebody who really doesn't want to know about god who wants to live their life independent from god or if you were someone who's just passing by someone who's just clicking around looking for answers someone who's watching this video that video turn into anything you can for a little tiny glimpse of hope just passing by Trying to muddle through life. Trying to find some sort of answer to some sort of question. Please, let me encourage you this morning. God loves you. And God has given you an opportunity right here 
right now, in this moment, to turn to him, to pray to him, to speak to him. You see, God calls out to you. You want to know where God is in all of this? Right now, God is you. He's talking to you. I'm not God. But God is talking to you through me. And he will say to you, today is the day to repent. Today is the day to turn away from all those things that you do that you know are wrong. In your heart, you know it's bad. Turn to God. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to take away your sin. And ask him to give you the best gift, free gift, that you will ever receive. And that is the ability to get to know him. That is the forgiveness of sin. And that is what we celebrate today on Good Friday. <clears throat> Do you love him this morning? Do you hate him? Are you just passing by? Because wherever you stand with Jesus this morning, he loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you. Okay, so as it is Good Friday, um, normally on a Good Friday service we also do communion um, and so since I am doing the Good Friday service it falls to me uh, to lead us in communion this morning. So uh, if you want to pause the video or whatever, uh, go and grab some bread or a, a cracker or a biscuit or something. Uh, grab some juice or whatever you've got lying around, even if it's just some water. Do you know what? The, the, the physical thing that you're going to use now, it doesn't matter. Because all these are symbols and things to remind us of what Jesus has said. You don't need to have bread and wine. If all you've got is a Jacob's cracker and a bit of water, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So you grab what you need, you come back and you unpause the video and we will go from there. Jesus said, the Bible says, that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is a symbol of my body that is going to be broken for you. And every time you take communion, whether you are all together in a building or whether you're on lockdown and you can't get out anyway, whenever you do this, do it to remember that my body was broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that was shed for you. This is the symbol of what was shed for you. You see, in the Old Testament, uh, the shedding of blood was the only thing that could get rid of sin. And so it is in the new. You see, in the Old Testament, they used to sacrifice um, animals so that... Uh, they, the shedding of the blood of the animals would be a symbol of the taking away of the sin. It would cover the sins of the people. But you know, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. The reason we don't do animal sacrifices anymore as a church, the reason we don't do it is because Jesus' blood, once and for all, has covered all of our sin. So in the same way, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood that was shed for you. And again, do this to remember my sacrifice and what it cost 
so that you can have the free gift of eternal life. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to pray. So if you've watched any of the Hope Kids uh, online videos, you will know that we pray by closing our eyes and we're going to put our hands together either like this or like this or like this. And we do that so that we don't get distracted by everything else around us. You know, in church, sometimes it's really easy to pray because everyone's around us and we kind of know what to do. Um, but at home, maybe there are a thousand things to distract us. Now, if you've got little ones at home, maybe don't close your eyes. But for those of you who are free of... The, of uh, immediate distraction it might help just to close your eyes put your hands together and we're going to pray together right now father god we thank you uh, for this day today this good friday father we thank you uh, for the love that you have demonstrated to us even while we were far away from you you still loved us and you demonstrated that love for us by dying on a cross by bringing us victory by bringing us life and freedom and hope for a future lord we thank you for the sacrifice that you gave and father we pray this morning uh, that whatever uh, category we, we fall into this morning maybe we are those who love you this morning maybe we are those who hate you this morning maybe we are those who are just passing by but father god we pray that some element of this message would just resonate with us this morning and just not for now lord but for the coming days the weeks the month the years and for the rest of our lives Lord, I ask that you touch each one of us this morning, even me. Lord, as I bring this message, I pray that you will teach me something new this morning of your grace, of your love that you have lavished upon us. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering right now. Lord, we pray for those in the world who uh, maybe have coronavirus or are maybe uh, stuck in a house all alone. Lord, we pray for those who are ill. Lord, we pray for those who... Uh, maybe just have no access to help right now, Father God. We know there are those who still need things like food bank, who still need things like social care. Father God, I pray for those people right now. Lord, we pray for those who are mourning loss. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones uh, through this time, Father God. We pray for those who are separated from sick, uh, sick loved ones at this time. Lord, we pray for your church this morning. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen your church, that you will guide us uh, in the ways that you want us to go. <clears throat> and Lord, in this time of fear and of darkness, Lord, I pray that the church truly will be, even in lockdown, the light of the world. Father, for the passers-by, for those who hate you, Lord, we pray salvation to their souls. Lord, we pray that you will come in a way that only you can touch their hearts. Open their eyes to the truth that is your gospel. And Father God, to those of us who love you this morning, we pray that you will strengthen us. We pray <coughs> that... <coughs> we pray that this will not be a time of um, <clears throat> of recoiling and, 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 and hiding, Lord, but we will take this as an opportunity, even in things like lockdown, even during this dark time, that we will take opportunities that you present to us, speaking maybe to our neighbours <coughs> or to the people we pass on our five, ten minute exercise a day or to the people who are two metres in front of us in the shopping queue. Lord, we pray for opportunities during this time. We thank you, <clears throat> not just for Good Friday. 
Lord, we thank you for Resurrection Sunday. And Lord God, we look forward to the Son's Day. May we ever keep that in mind, that the Son's Day is coming. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, <clears throat> as you may tell, my voice is going. So I'm going to love you, <clears throat> and I'm going to leave you. Guys, leave comments uh, down below. Chat to each other. We've got the Facebook group. We've got the WhatsApp group. Uh, we've got a couple of videos going out every day. And come back Sunday morning, 10.30, where we are going to celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Until we see each other again, have a great time. Stay safe, and we'll see you Sunday morning.